So we're developing uh, new algebraic operations, and it's just the way we look at it is as just abbreviations. So repeated addition is multiplication by that number that how how many times it's been repeated, or repeated multiplication is repeated is is uh, is uh, exponentiation. The power n is when multiplication is repeated n times. Okay, so then uh, we took it to. Uh, so that's a convention, okay? That's a convention, uh, but then we are we want to see how that convention is that abbreviation works out for us if we look at some very simple algebra, and that is the the algebraic operation that is uh, you, you can see it here in the middle. Uh, so repeat it n times, then m times, then it means that it repeated n plus m times, okay? Whether it is that's the second row. Whether it is uh, about um, addition or multiplication, it doesn't matter. So once again, if it is repeated n, 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 and then m times, it means that together it is repeated n plus m times. So that, therefore, that's property number one. As you can see, for multiplication, it's very simple and familiar. That you simply factor a out. A times n plus a times m is equal a times n plus m. Okay. For uh, for exponentiation, it's slightly more complicated, but it's well at all not at all more complicated. It's only new, but otherwise the analogy is complete. So it is just the the abbreviation uh, <coughs> uh, still works out. Okay, so uh, a to the nth power means that n is repeated n times. N to the nth power means that it is repeated m more times. Altogether, it is repeated n plus m times. So that's that's the what you get in the bottom. Okay. Uh, secondly, it is a slightly more complex uh, step, and that is the um, uh, what if you are repeated, re repeat, not repeat twice, uh, but repeat and then repeat what you have repeated. Okay, so you you take a uh, n times, and then the whole thing is repeated m times. Okay, so whether it is addition or multiplication, it is repeated altogether n times m times. So it is a table with n rows and uh, m rows and n columns. Okay, so altogether n, n plus m times. So uh, the way the abbreviation works out, you have to do it twice in a row consecutively, just as if, uh, uh, well, uh, so that's what you see here. Uh, so if you go horizontally, you have an a, a times n, okay, uh, each each of these parentheses. But then then you look vertical, go vertical, and you realize that you have re you have uh, n, ti n times n is repeated n times, and that's why you end up with. So you, you do abbreviation the second time, and that's you end up with a times n multiplied by m, okay? But that's that's if you go uh, left and then down. But the the second one, the path we take here, uh, if you, you just repeat it total n times m times, and that that you have this abbreviation. Once you go back, you realize that there is nothing complicated. You have done this before. Uh, what what it has happened? You just uh, rearrange the uh, the uh, uh, the parentheses. So either at a times n, then times m, or you just a multiply a by n times m. Okay, uh, no more compli complicated than that. Simply more uh, newer. Uh, it is the uh, same about multiplication. So once again, you have uh, m rows, uh, each with n times multiplication repeated. They all multiply together, which means that all together you have repeated uh, a n times m times. Uh, and uh, and then that means that a times uh, would be if you put it together, you use that abbreviation once, just like here. Once you use the abbreviation once, then you have a to, a to the power of n times m. Okay, or you go the way we did here, so we go horizontally and uh, do abbreviation once for each of the rows, um, and uh, and then each of them will become a to the nth power, and then you go vertically in that column. It is repeated m times. Uh, so a, a to the nth power is repeated m times, and so which means that uh, you use abbreviation again. You have a times n m, a, a to the power of n m. Okay, so you can put parentheses here. Uh, hold on a second. So um, a a in the power n times m. If you go uh, down in the right, the counting the total number of elements, or you do it consecutively, uh, you first abbreviate. Eight uh, repeated n times into a times n, and then and then you know, all of those are repeated n times, so you have the second power m. Okay, so it's all about uh, about uh, abbreviations, and we have discovered these two formulas that work for uh, uh, for uh, uh, whatever we uh, uh, for these repeated uh, operations, and they are very not there, uh, pretty much identical. It is the next step that we made is uh, is uh, we we expand the applicability of those formulas. 
So, so the explanation of the our abbreviation is here, and it is it remain would remain valid. Uh, is a repeated addition, but what we're trying to go is what how we can we interpret the addition. So this is we're looking at these two expressions and try to understand what if n is not uh, 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 um, positive uh, integer. So that was a limitation. The only if run, n runs between one, two, three, four, you the the idea of repeating operations makes sense. You, repeating an operation zero times does not make sense. Not common sense. It's certainly not common sense. So then we are trying to, but that that's how history may have been developing, and that's uh, uh, new numbers appear from from you know real life that you need them, and then you look at them. What happens to the algebra? Can we still use, use them in the same manner as we did other numbers? And so we have to be careful. And if we, if we have invented this abbreviated uh, for, uh, format uh, for uh, for multiplication, for addition on the left, multiplication on the right, does uh, the choice of a equals zero and equals zero um, uh, works out? Um, and the, uh, uh, the the answer is we we got to have a new convention. So so that is the question. Uh, so how I should I put it? Uh, what is the meaning a times n, a, a times 0? OK, so in other words, n is equal to 0. And the answer is a new convention. a times 0 is equal to 0. Well, that, that's, well, that wasn't very hard to, to guess. So, But if you think about a repeated 0 times, and you end up with 0, uh, it kind of makes sense, but, uh, but not, 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 it's not as easy as the original one. OK, similarly, for the second one, uh, what is uh, a to the zero power, or uh, n is equal to zero? Does the rule apply? And we, we don't know what the rule is unless we decide what that is in the first place. So the answer to these questions are these. Then uh, a to the zero power should be from now on uh, considered one. Okay, and the, that's the only way for the whole thing to work out. If we want our rules to be still applicable, that is the convention that we should make. Okay, so that we, we verified it here. So it works out. Not only it works out, it is the only way for this formula to work out. If we choose any other idea how to understand a to the zero power, it, it would not work. Okay. Um, so that's what, that's what we have uh, uh, progress that we have made, and then we only added one extra number to to our uh, um, number so uh, that we can handle in this manner. Uh, but that's just a sign of it's important step because it's a sign of what's coming. Uh, but so let me summarize what we just uh, have had. So, um, so uh, what is uh, a to the a, a times n? A that's the that's the answer. N times. It is the answer for uh, n. For these values of n, okay. What is uh, a to the nth power? Uh, the answer is a times a times times a n times. Uh, uh, or once again, n equal one to three. So that's the abbreviation. So then there are rules. Let me just write them up. The rules that we derive from this abbreviation. Uh, what is it? Um, I forgot already. What the, so these are the, the two rules for one for uh, multiplication, the other one for division. So the, the first one is factoring, and the, the the second one is simply rearranging of the terms. So a n plus m is equal to a n plus a m. Rule number one. The second one is a times um, a times n times m, a n times m, okay? And we have similar rules, very similar rules uh, for the uh, for multiplication, for abbreviated multiplication. a times n times m is a times n plus m. And secondly, a times a power n, power m is equal to a times n times m, okay? So these are the two main rules, and uh, uh, they're, they're, they're especially the two on the right. They might seem be, to be hanging in the air, and they're kind of uh, something that um, 
you might have to memorize, and uh, it would be true, but not at this point. If you just if you feel that way, just go back to where they came from. Remember that it is nothing but repeated multiplication, and then the, these rules are uh, make, makes perfect sense. So those two on the right, okay. Um, but now this so this is the basis, the baseline, and now we are moving on to to the next step, and that is uh, what if what if n is equal to zero. Okay, and then then we have to explain what a zero is, a times zero is. Oh, well, that's easy. Okay, so but that is a, is a convention, and the convention for the other one. Once again, the same question: What if n is equal to zero? Uh, the convention is a zero power is equal to one. Okay, so the main conclusion there is rules are still satisfied. Okay, so we added one more number to our list. So now we have covered for n equals zero, one, two, three. Okay, so so now these abbreviation works for for all numbers, all all positive integers as well as zero. Okay, so and then once again history continues on, and new numbers are discovered, and they're they're you know introduced, and they are, need to be used. And the next one is. Uh, what kind of numbers we introduce next? Actually, there are, I, I said fractions, but actually first, probably better to think about negative numbers first. Okay, so what if, what if n is less than zero? What is the meaning then of a times, say, negative n? What is the meaning of a times negative n? And, 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 uh, mm. Let's just say, um, okay, I don't think I can't get around it. Uh, a times negative m, that's, uh, I'm trying to match them up. So if m is positive, then negative m is negative, and what's the meaning of a uh, multiplied by negative m? And the answer is uh, repeated subtraction. It works in, in analogy with the uh, analogously to the original. So we, when the n was positive, we repeat the uh, addition n times, and now we repeat subtraction n times. So it is equal to negative m minus m minus m. I'm sorry, a. These are all a's. A minus a minus a minus a minus a. M times. Okay. So. Um, So that's a convention, a new convention. How to incorporate uh, this L, uh, these new numbers into the old algebra? Also, so that the laws are still these laws are still satisfied, and they are, you can you can verify that these these properties are uh, still satisfied. There really no no trouble whatsoever uh, to verify that. Slightly more complicated for the uh, case of abbreviated multiplication, uh, n is less than zero. So if we take uh, negative m where m is positive then a to the negative m power, uh, negative, how do you repeat something negative a uh, number of times? Uh, the answer you don't. You have to uh, come up with a convention uh, explaining what it is, and you can guess what, what it is. So if, uh, re uh, if, if uh, uh, multiplying by negative number is repeated subtraction, taking to the negative power means repeated what? Instead of repeat division, yes. So in other words, you divide one by a. Now let me maybe use the other way to do it. One divide by a, divide by a, divide by a, n times m times. Okay, so uh, so once again, that's a new convention. Uh, the rules. Rules still hold. Those two rules, uh, or four rules, uh, they still hold. Uh, you can you can certainly verify that this is the case. Uh, 
um, uh, let, 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 let's do that, say, uh, a negative n times a negative m. Does it work out in the, the way that we have? Uh, we, so we divide a by, um, we divide by a n times. Well, I guess maybe maybe I should I should make a uh, half step here before we move on. Uh, you can turn it into a times. Uh, if you divide by a n times, it is the same as you divide by. Uh, you you put them all in one uh, in the denominator like this, right? Dividing by a n times m times. It it means that you have m times in the. Uh, in the uh, uh, in the um, uh, in the denominator, that's all. And so, and then, and then, what what you do here you, is, uh, you can guess what this is, right? So, so once again, a negative m power uh, division to every m times, uh, which means that the algebra, that, as we know it, we, we put that uh, division into one denominator, and now we have multiplication repeated m times in the denominator. So I can use the abbreviation again. So what do I get? A multiplied by itself m times, what do I get? We, I, I, I'm using the original abbreviation. When I multiply a by itself, n or m times, I'm using the power. So what do I have here? One over a to the m power. Okay, so. Uh, that is that is the uh, crucial part of the convention uh, that uh, it, more of a formula than an explanation. So repeated uh, division, you, it's, you can think of it as an explanation. But if you wanted something really abbreviated, uh, then this is this is it. So let me write it out here. So a negative m is equal to you can add it uh, as as property number three. A negative m is equal to one over a m. So one division, one one power, and one division. Okay. Uh, well, actually, if I want to go to the right, uh, I, I could still have a third property for my subtraction. I'll have a negative m is equal to negative a m. Okay, so once again, the idea of repeated uh, multiplication comes come into play. Okay, so so that's that's the progress. You can you can also confirm as, as I was going to do, uh, confirm the other the first two properties. So a negative m times uh, a negative n, right? So a, both of these, according to my formula, it's 1 over a m times 1 over a n. OK, then I bring them together uh, into one fraction, if I know how to multiply fractions, right? And then I bring them together according my, to my formula number uh, number 1, like this. And so, so it checks out. It checks out, right? So the property number two. Uh, uh, well, hold on a second. I'm, I'm a little bit ahead of myself. Uh, it's you not know, entirely fi uh, finished. Uh, what is I was trying to say? Uh, what I'm trying to say is uh, this formula is supposed to produce a to the power of a to the power of the sum negative n negative m. This is the last step. Okay. So I add negative n to a negative m, and that becomes my new power. So which is literally, once again, these two are the, the two exponents, and they add up to be added together. So that's what the first rule, uh, rule indicates. Well, the, the second rule is like the more complicated, then just, just take, take it for granted that it works out. So this is number one. Number one, two works out fine. OK. So, so that's a crucial uh, step forward, uh, and we are expanding um, our algebra to the areas that have not been covered by, by, by these rules. If you think about this, if you, uh, the word for rule is also law, so if you think it, about it as, as uh, um, well, uh, laws of physics, okay? So laws of physics, if, if you remember Newton, uh, he was uh, the, his discovery was uh, was to to everybody knew about the gravitation as that apple falling down because it's pulled down by the gravity. But the, his discovery was that the same gravitation that actually pulls, you know, the the uh, the moon towards the uh, the Earth. So the the Earth pulls not only the apple 
But now you realize the same law applies to pulling in the 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 moon. Okay, so you're expanding the same idea to to new and new objects uh, that might be entirely entirely different. Another analogy, if you like, you can you can take uh, actually instead of laws of nature, take laws of uh, of, of people. Uh, so I don't know what what could that be. I don't know copyright. So copyright law applies to printed uh, or or uh, painting or whatever, and was maybe existed 100 years ago, say, but then the, the, the internet didn't exist. And then they said, what, uh, well, let's, uh, let's, uh, we, now we have something new, new medium, so what do we do with it? Well, let's say, just let's just take those laws and apply them directly without any modifications. And that's pretty much the way, as, as I understand it, that's pretty much the way it works out. So whatever is on the internet covered by uh, copyright, copyright laws, the end. So that's, that's roughly what we're doing here. So new circumstances, New objects, the common sense that it came from does not apply anymore, but uh, uh, we don't want to come up with new rules. We just we, we want to have these two rules over there and stick with them. Okay, and they apply in the, the next stage is, as, as promised, uh, the next uh, stage is uh, uh, what if uh, n is uh, a fraction. What if n is a fraction? What, what's the meaning of multiplication? And uh, um, uh, fortunately, um, we are uh, not um, in, in any trouble. Uh, in the first column, there it's still remember it's simply about the addition. So, uh, but uh, um, um, well, let, let me skip. Let me skip straight to the second column. Uh, what what is the, what it what it means to take a to the power of a fractional power? Say say p over q. Um, uh, I, I mean, let, let's start with the, the reciprocals. One over p. So what is a to the power of one over p? P an integer. Okay, so so uh, so one a to one over p has some meaning that it cannot be explained in the in the way way we have to have explained it because first of all it is not if it is a fractional number you cannot repeat something fractionally many times so that explanation doesn't apply the number is not zero it is also not a negative number necessarily to the fraction so one half what's the meaning of one half uh, the answer is uh, you may may know the answer. Uh, the answer is the root. A1 over P is explained as the square P, 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 a degree P or root of A. Okay, so um, which uh, it seems, seems to come from nowhere, uh, but uh, if you look at the, uh, once again, those rules that still have to be satisfied. We still want to be the main goal, whatever we do, we want those two rules to be satisfied uh, uh, as before. So we, we want to, for, for that to happen, we want to, uh, in th that explanation, that explanation is forced by, by that requirement. Okay, so for example, so the, once again, if I look at, uh, if I want to confirm with this idea, if I want to confirm uh, rule number one, uh, that is about the repeated um, multiplication, and a, uh, times a m. Uh, so why is it? Well, well, let's start with a simple one. Say a one half times a one half. Okay. So what is the meaning of it? If we take our explanation uh, uh, as 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 we, is written here, uh, according to our convention, that's the new convention. According to this convention, we have square root of a times square root of a. But what we know about square root of a is multiplied by itself gives me what? A positive. Square root of a times square root of a is what? It is a, yes. So on one hand. On the other hand, uh, so that's the left-hand side of our rule. On the right-hand side is we're supposed to uh, add the two powers together, which is one half and one half, and that works out 
quite nicely. A power 1 is equal to A 1 half plus 1 half. Okay? So these two powers over here, what has happened to them, we added them together just as we did it over here. Let me circle it right here. So powers uh, with the same base. Remember that, uh, that, that uh, A is called the base. I don't think I mentioned this. Uh, base. Uh, uh, if we are multiplying two numbers with the same base, then what happens to the exponents? Um, uh, they are being added together. Okay, and uh, so it happens with negative numbers, and now it happens with, with fractions too. Okay, but remember where it all comes from. It comes from over here, because uh, when uh, n and m were, were integers, or were positive integers, so it was entirely about repeating something n times and then repeating it m times. Okay. So, but algebraically, it is about addition. So, if you multiply two numbers, then the what happens to the exponents that they being added together. Okay. So that's and that's what we we are facing here. And um, well, maybe I think I skipped here. Maybe one extra step here. A squared of a squared, which is equal to a. Okay, and that uh, confirms uh, con confirms the operation. But uh, you, can, you can certainly think of uh, any other uh, um, steps of similar similar nature, uh, accomplishing the same thing with the different different powers uh, rather than one half. So it could be could be anything else, uh, because uh, once they have been multiplied, we know what uh, we know that it is the rule of, of roots to begin with. Uh, but uh, now it is it is uh, we actually going to explain the. Which, which way we're going to be explaining it? We are we going to explain this. This needs to be confirmed from from the rules of roots. Okay. So so uh, fortunately, uh, remember the roots have been explained fully. Uh, we, the roots are the inverses of the powers. So whatever we know about the powers, uh, the the rules of powers, uh, pretty much this. Okay, from those we derive rules of roots, and from those rules we derive rules of, of powers with fractional uh, exponents. Okay, so fractional exponents, but uh, it certainly works out pretty much the same way. Okay, so let me let me try to uh, look at maybe one or two of these. So, uh, so one number one will be say square root of uh, a, uh, a, times square root of b. One one of the rules that we need to take care of. Okay. So, uh, so the well, you know what the answer is for this. That's right, a a times b. Okay, so uh, so where does it come from? It comes from the inverse, uh, from, from the fact that the square root is the inverse. So so um, let's square it. So you have a uh, square root of a times square root of b squared is equal to a b squared squared, which is AB. So AB, let's say AB positive. Okay, so uh, I guess that's what I was trying to say here is the um, the um, uh, the, uh, the understanding of the roots as, as inverses of the of the power function, in this particular case, the square root is the uh, inverse of the square root, uh, introduces these rules into 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 the algebra, and then uh, and then the, that algebra uh, brings us back to to the powers if we are willing to uh, to uh, to apply this rule uh, rules number one and number two expand it to uh, to the new uh, exponents. So the exponents were positive integers, then added zero, then negative. Now we have added reciprocals, but it also uh, well that's the next step. What is a power p over q, and the answer is uh, fortunately is is uncomplicated. Simply, a squared of q root of p of a taken to the power of p. Okay, so that's yet another convention.
So the, uh, uh, we explain every, every power in that manner uh, up to uh, all rationals then, all rational numbers. All rational exponents are allowed. Okay, so that's that's as far as as, as far as we go. Uh, so once again, there is a little a lot of work to do, and, and it, it gets every step we make. It, it, the, the confirmation of those two little rules in the beginning that has a, such a simple simple uh, reasoning behind them uh, gets harder and harder to explain. So we'll just. Uh, Pretty much skip over these uh, these complex um, complications. As you can see, this this is an example of a, uh, how how things become more complicated. So this was this was not complicated, but still more complicated than the original. And here we are dealing with fractions, and it is because become more complicated. And the next step is really uh, is is is, uh, is especially advanced. What if uh, R or N is uh, is real? So in other words, say a to the power of pi. What is the meaning of this? Okay. So so in other words, pi, as you should know, cannot be represented as a fraction of. Uh, it is not a rational number. It cannot be represented as a fraction of two integers. So what is the meaning of that? And once again, we we have to explain it somehow. The answer is lies, uh, however, in calculus. You can really. Um, uh, the answer lies in calculus. To properly explain the meaning of real numbers to begin with, you need, you need calculus. And certainly when you do algebraic, algebraic operations with that, um, uh, why do you need calculus? Because, because uh, uh, real numbers uh, such as pi, it, its representation is, has infinitely many uh, digits. Like this. So every time you see infinities, it is probably, probably hard to be sure how, how to handle it without calculus. So, uh, uh, so then the last step, then this one will be there. Will be one more convention. Uh, what is that we have achieved up to this point? Uh, let's say take to summarize. Uh, take a is equal to two. So then, what is two to the x? What is two to the x? Well, it is a function. Okay. And what do we know about it when x is one to three? It is uh, a two multiplied by itself n times. Okay, so uh, I'm trying to understand this new function that we haven't haven't discussed at all in this class, but it becomes very important. So two to the x power, it's not the same as x squared. Never confuse those. So it's a new function, and we are taking a power of two, two repeated x times, but it works out only for some um, whenever x is a one, two, three, four. Okay, when x is equal to zero, we know that two to the zero is equal to uh, one. Okay, so one more value, then x is equal to negative one, negative two, negative three. We also know that x to negative n is equal to uh, one over two to the n. Okay, so it is the reciprocal of of uh, of this. Okay, so so if you try to plot this graph one point by one point. What we have uh, accomplished now is a bunch of points. So this is one, okay, that's x is zero. X is one, it is two, then it is four, and then it is uh, uh, eight. One, two, this is four, this is one, and then it is eight, grows really fast at three. So the power is three, the value is eight. Negative numbers, negative numbers that are reciprocals. So whenever I have ne uh, uh, negative one, the value is half, right, half. So as you can see, they will be going, as, as fast as they, they were going up over there on the right, they will be going as fast down on the right. So, uh, so it will be one half, one fourth, one eighth, like this, okay? So that way, I have already a bunch of points, and it gives me the, uh, the, the general idea of what the graph, uh, what the graph looks like. Uh, but then we also added rational x is equal to p over q, rational, and that uh, more points, more points, and in fact, it is uh, it, these points will almost fill the whole uh, the whole thing, like this. And that gives me the, my function that I want to 
I need. So more points, but they are still they are still cuts. It's not a curve because there are cuts in this curve because uh, uh, we haven't still explained what the, uh, what the power of uh, um, of uh, with uh, with a uh, irrational exponent is. So x to the what is uh, what is two to the pi, okay? Uh, but uh, as you can see, the the function is uh, is uh, uh, is here. Um, it, we have a general idea of what it is. And I uh, just uh, want to mention that, uh, well, you might remember where multiplication, in, under what circumstances multiplications appears in, in uh, a repeated multiplication is, appears in real time. One would be, well, a uh, bank account. So if you have, say, a 5% interest rate, every year you multiply by 1.05, okay? After n years, you multiply by 1.05 n times. Okay, another one, population growth. So if you have 5% growth of the population per year in the in the city, you, that's the same formula will be repeated. 1.05 taken to the uh, nth power after n years, that, that will be your population. Uh, um, the, uh, um, uh, say, uh, the, the temperature, uh, temperature um, uh, decline. So the opposite, say, uh, uh, decline of temperature is if we're moving from right to left over there. Uh, if you bring a cup of coffee in a, uh, in a room, uh, then the temperature will start to drop, but it will, it will never pass through the temperature of the, uh, the room temperature. So it will be declining exponentially once again. So that's what exponential uh, functions are. And then we'll, we'll, we'll talk, I guess we'll just talk about them uh, next time. Uh, Picking up from from this point on, it, it is a very important function, and uh, uh, so beyond the um, polynomials and rational functions, uh, this is the uh, most important function before you get to trigonometry. Okay, so I think I'll stop here. It's a good place to stop, and we'll resume after the break. Have a nice break.